Festival yesterday, and we were there about half hour. I said, We've got to go. It's too humid out here. It's too humid. Okay, I think I prefer the heat without the humidity. Um, okay, uh, coming up this week, we've got RSC Cares led by Aaron Omnis. They have child care, if you trust John Omnis with that. And um, uh, if you didn't sign up for the woman's Bible study, you can still do that. They've had one, um, but uh, you can still sign up for that. And um, oh, and Women don't forget to sign up for the woman's breakfast on the 21st. We get free Der Dutchman, and then we get to go to a all pumpkin farm thing, something like that. And Carl has an announcement. All right, I know this is short notice. I kind of, my fault, I kind of hem hot around three or four days after God gave it to me before I even mentioned it to anybody else. But we are doing a ride down to Athens. It's approximately three hours. You've got just about every terrain you want to travel on. Uh, we're going to meet up here between 8.30 and 9.30. We like to leave out as close to 9 o'clock as possible, but cars are welcome. It's a nice scenic drive. If you don't have anything to do on Labor Day, come travel with us down to Athens. We're going to get Larry's doghouse, have a little devotional, and then you can either ride back with the group or you can go your own way. There's lots of shopping and stuff down there. I already know there's lots of specials in Laurelville and Circleville, both on the way back. So if y'all don't have anything to do on Labor Day, come ride with us. We're going to go down there and have a good time. That sounds like fun. Fun, fun, fun. All right, let's pray and get started. Father God, thank you, thank you, thank you for the beautiful day. Lord, thank you for the beautiful church that you put me in and uh, all these beautiful people, Lord, that you surrounded us with. Lord, um, bless our offering today, Lord, and, and invade our worship, Lord. Let it just be a um, sweet aroma to you, Father, in your precious name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. One. 
the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome the King who was and is and evermore will be. In Jesus' mighty name, I His stories we hear a lot, right? They're laughing for some reason, Mark. I'm not sure why. But he tells about it, and I remember it because I was here. That we had, when we bought this building, it used to be a power factory a long time ago. Where we had a school. We had a big old mountain of just pallets and trash. And we didn't know how get rid of that. He was out there praying. How do I do this? God, it, it's literally a mountain. And your word says that you can move mountains. And some things took place. And by miracles and the way God does things, within just a couple days, that mountain was gone. And uh, someone did it for us. And, but, and he'll tell it again. But what about 
about the mountains in our own life? Is it just family, health, financial, marriage, all of those things that can be mountains? And when we call upon His name, even when you do not feel like it, even when you don't feel like praising through it, you just do it anyway. You, you call upon His name. You praise Him anyway. And it's not based on our emotions, because my emotions get me in trouble. How about you? Oh, yeah. But I will speak to the mountain. And I will proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, even when I don't maybe even feel like it. So let's give our, let's trade our worries for some faith today, okay? Why would I worry when giants come calling my name? God is so much bigger than troubles I face. Why would I hunger for power or riches or fame? My God is so much better than all of these.
Lord, we pray right now. Lord, I pray over people. I pray over even us up here, all of us in this place. If there's anything, a mountain that needs to be moved today, be gone in the name of Jesus. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are a king. We are forever grateful for you. We thank you for the power you have. We thank you for who you are. We love you. You gave your life for mine. Nailed to the cross. You crucified all my sin and shame was washed by your mercy. You are the treasure I find, my reason for living. So let my life become an offering. To the one who is worthy. Let's proclaim this to you, Lord. And all no praise to the Lord most high. And all no praise to the one who saved my life. All no praise to Jesus Christ, my King of heaven. Storm the gates of my heart. The veil in between was torn apart, and you hold the keys to the grave. You bring things to life, you roll stones away. All praise to the Lord most high, all praise to the one. Save my life, all oh, praise to Jesus Christ, my King of heaven, my King forever. All oh, praise to the Lord most high, all oh, praise to the one who saved my life, all oh, praise to Jesus Christ, my King of heaven.
Jesus Christ, my King of heaven, my King forever. My King forever. Is he your King? Is he the Lord of your life? Is he first on your list of priorities? Or is everything else? And he comes just down there below everything. I challenge all of us today, Lord, to we want to put you first. He loves you. He loves me. And the enemy wants to tell us otherwise. But it's a lie. You're loved. I'm loved. Thank you for that love, God. And I've got a friend I'm closer than a brother And there is no judgment Oh, how he loves me. I've got a friend, and he is my strength, and he is my portion. With me in the valley, with me in the fire, with me in the storm. Let all my life testify.
What a savior. What a friend. What a da, 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 da. All right. I don't have any notes up here at all. I left them back there, which is okay. I'm better like that. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Glad you came to church today. Trish, you're okay. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you. Christy, Elizabeth, come on. Come on, come on, come on. All right. Good morning, everybody. We're, we're camping this weekend. Big first service today, and a lot of folks out camping. A bunch of our deacons are... Uh, I'll be letting you know. We have an election coming soon, so I'll be letting you know the ones not to vote for. That's a joke. That's a joke. Good to see everybody. A lot of people out today because it's just a holiday weekend. We got a young church, people traveling. I'm glad you're here. So glad you're here. Big, I don't know why first service is really packed. These folks behind me are leaving on a missions trip tomorrow. And uh, Trish, of course, is the, the leader of the pack and uh, can't travel better, can't do better than going with Trish. So we're excited about them going. I want you to see them. I guess there's a fourth lady going with you too, right? A lady named Brenda? Okay, so I'm going to put them on the spot. Trish, you don't have any trouble talking. I know you don't. But, yeah. yeah. I, I want you to tell people your name so they can pray for you. My name's Elizabeth. And how terrified you are to be going on this trip. And I really am. They're yeah, I know. I, that's why I was trying to, trying to get them to pray for you more. Oh. Uh, anxious and leaving my family again for the third time this year. Well, we went to Peru together, but I was gone before that, and now I'm leaving again, and I'm really, really under attack. I'm terrified. I'm terrified I don't want to leave. And okay. I, <laughs> that's where I wanted to get you, because I want the church to pray for you, okay? That's why That's why I did what I did just there. Not to make you cry. I wasn't trying to make you cry, but she's real nervous about leaving, and she's been gone a bunch, and she went with us in Peru, and she's amazing. She'll do amazing, okay? She's just apprehensive a little bit about going and right you're amazing hey you'll do amazing god's amazing right so now give her the microphone let's get her crying no 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 christy and this is my first mission trip so yeah, pull that mic up real yeah christy and i'm very nervous first mission trip and there's so many things going through my mind right now so yeah, very yeah. anxious. Are yes. you comforted that you're going with Trish or not comforted you're going with Trish? I think, oh, yeah, that's that's the one comfort. Yeah, Absolutely. okay, okay. Yes. I, I, play, I play with all that. Okay. So, okay, you're off and you're going. Let, let's let the girls talk. Is that okay? Is that all right? Let's just put it on them. Give that back to Elizabeth. I'll try to get her to cry again. No. Yeah. You're leaving, leaving tomorrow from where? From Dayton at 7 p.m. P.m.? Yes. Okay. Flying to Atlanta, Atlanta, probably, right? Atlanta to Seoul, Korea. 
<sighs> yeah, that's no potty break airplane trip right there. Yeah, that's like six meals or something, right? I mean, they on Delta probably, right? Because you're leaving out of Atlanta, yes. right? That's a long 14 hours or something. Yeah, so that's not Kansas anymore, <laughs> right? Then from there, where? To uh, Manila. Manila and the Philippines. Mm -hmm. You know, the Philippines are a whole bunch of islands, right? Yes. Are you staying on there? No. No, of course not, right? Right. <laughs> right. Then we take a hopper to a Mindoa? Hopper. Mindoa? Mindanao. Yeah, you probably ought to figure out where you're going before you're... I know where we're going. I'm, I'm I kidding, just I'm can't kidding. pronounce A little island? A little island, right? That's where yeah. you've been before. And, and that is that where the hostile folks are at? And there's a school there? And they don't want Christians there? And they don't want the Christian school there? And and all that. And what were you saying? Oh, oh our, our, our vacation Bible school raised money. And you're taking that with you for the school? We already sent it ahead. Sent it. So the kids brought... Girls and boys brought change... And thousand dollars, a couple thousand, three thousand dollars to help with the school. Mm -hmm. So our children have participated in uh, the the new Christian school on a Muslim island. Is that right? I'm saying that right, okay? So you guys get to cover your heads and everything, right? Don't you get to cover? No, you don't. It's mixed. You'll be with armed guards. Until church starts to go walking. What? <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> yeah. I, I was. She said arm guards. I thought that's better than guys without arms. I, I don't. I don't. I, I'm just, uh, my mind is not right. Well, we're for you, not against you. You're going for till the 16th. Is that what somebody said? You ride back in the states the 16th. Uh, would you pray for these folks for the next couple weeks? We've got a couple that never flown and never, not, I shouldn't say never flown, never been out of the country. Trish, go ahead. Uh, add, add. But uh, pray for them. Would you please do that? Because they're, yeah. So I wanted you to hear the girls talk because they, they, they have some little anxiety over it. And don't worry. Don't worry, right? Great big God, hey, has the whole world right here. He knows you by name. Uh, you know, uh, just talk about Elizabeth. She went to Peru with us. She has a daughter. She feels like is going to be a missionary. And I told her, um, the mom of a missionary is hard, so you better get used to traveling. So God just breaking her in in terms of what what's ahead, right? We don't know. I don't know. I, I hope the Lord comes this fall before my knee surgery. But we don't know what God has planned. We don't know what God's fully doing. And, and I just believe God's training and equipping us all the time for what he's ultimately trying to do with us. So just go, go like you own the place, right? Your father, your father owns it all, right? And you're his kids. So does that make sense? My kids don't even knock. Your kids knock? They come right in the house, man. They come right in, you know? The dad owns the house, right? And the kids run around like they, they own it too. Their names aren't on the mortgage, right? They own it too. Trish, you want to share something? You want to share anything? Sure. So then also we'll be staying in an orphanage across the street from the mission as well, doing like a VBS every night with those kids, and then um, studying on things that you wear, like Colossians 3, Ephesians 6, things like that, and then they'll be rewarded at the end with new outfits. So we're real excited about that, got sponsors for that, and just thankful for what God might put in them. And then... Um, and then we'll be working with the staff at the mission, the teachers, and then also the pastors and ministry leaders in schools, in prisons, and hospitals. And then also we have the big new building project that we're in the middle of, and we'll be on site for that as well. So lots to cram in a very small window of time, and I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm very excited. So we'll have a lot to bring back and just very thankful for all your prayers and financial support along the way and just grateful for VBS's push and um, 
just nobody wants to do God's work alone. We're called to do it together. And even if you're not physically flying, like we really need your prayers. There's a lot of spiritual warfare there. Yeah, yeah. So keep so us. So how do you feel about your team that God's given you? How do you feel about them? They seem like a bunch of kind of chicken littles a little bit. You know what I mean? I, you know, they're going to be great, aren't they? I, We're I'm giving in you a chance. and that's what matters. I, I'm is... trying to give you a chance to brag on them a minute. That's what I'm trying to do, right? No, they've done a great job packing and getting ready. And, and really, I mean, it is about being willing, right, yeah, Pastor Oh, well, for, sure, for sure. It's about being willing. So Listen, you're allowed you... to do it afraid. You want to do it anointed and confident. Right, right, right. But right. it's okay to do it yeah. afraid. And, and then God builds your confidence as you keep doing things with him. But it's like any new relationship yep. where you're going to a new place together in that relationship. They're experiencing new places with God. And so it's just the unknown is what gets us, right, right. Pastor Mark? Oh, it scares us to death. Yeah. But until you just start to realize God is with me every place I go, mm -hmm. right? And all I have to do is say yes and, and get myself where I'm supposed to be, mm -hmm. and he'll do the rest. Right? I mean, that's usually what happens, right? And the safest place is to be in the will of oh, God. Oh, ask my wife that. My wife says that all the time. The safest place, the best place you can ever be is right in the center of God's will. Even if it is in jail. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I, just, I just tried. Okay. So thank you, girls. We'll pray for you real quick. Okay. You guys remember them? You will? Okay. Father, sending out some here from the church. Your hand, Lord, on them. Your, your blessing upon them, your anointing upon them. Lord, stretch and do and accomplish and be and reveal and help. God, and do the miraculous. We're your kids doing your work. God, I pray that you would reveal to them, God, that you will use them if they'll just be willing. If they'll just, Lord, here's my hands, here's my feet. Lord, use my mouth. So God, just uh, do what you want to do. You've already been before them. You already, uh, Lord, have put divine appointments before them. God, safety before them. Help, Lord, all those things. So God, we pray for protection upon them. We know, God, that you're looking out for them. God, I pray that the church would step up in prayer and just, just, flood you, Lord, reminding you, God, of, uh, of yours that are in the Philippines. So, Lord, I pray for blessing and strength and goodness and purpose and great testimonies to return. Bless these girls, Lord, as they go out. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Thanks for going. We're happy. Excited for you. Pray for you every day, man. Doing good. Doing good. You out there, out there in the crazy land, right? You going back? You're done? Oh, I'm so happy for that. So happy for that. Good, good, good. Military guy, been in, I don't want to, if we tell him we got to kill him, right? That was, I think he's been in Jordan, Iraq. Yeah? Syria. And you're out of there, huh? You out of the military? Okay, right, good. You move back home and start being dad, huh, right? How, how do you like that baby? Yeah, what? Yeah, good. That's great, military guy here, been in hard places, been in hard places for a while, been praying. I've been praying no war until you get out of there. And I saw you today, so let it rip now, right? I, I don't mean, I know, I know it's all... You hate for all the uh, all that's coming. You hate it. You hate it. You hate it. But we got to go there to get to the end, right? That's where we're at. So, thank you for coming to church today. We're so glad you're here. Love you all. I, with my knee, but not been so good. I've been a little bit limited to get around and talk to all of you. But if you'll find me, I'll I'll talk to you. <laughs> Put a little bit of that back on you guys. I don't mean that bad. I just mean hey. I'll tell you what, I'd be more than happy to just hang out by the cookies all morning and meet you out there in the mornings, okay? Good to see everybody. Glad you came to church today. It's Labor Day. So go home and get to work, right? I, I never really understood Labor Day, but how, why, why is it you get a day off for Labor Day? I don't, you're supposed to work extra hours on Labor Day. Nobody's for that, so let's go on. 
Oh, uh, what are we talking about? The whole world's crazy, the whole thing's crazy, the, right? Lord, you got to come get us. Hopefully before a knee surgery in November. That's what we're hoping for. Father, we bless you this morning. We love you. You're everything to us. Everything, Lord, everything. You, you've replaced all of our idols. You've replaced all of our fears. You've replaced, Lord, everything we used to run to. And we have you, and we're happy, God. We're satisfied, Lord, that you're the answer in all those things, that you're the one, God, that that comforts us and helps us and speaks to us and, Lord, leads us in directions and, and helps us, Lord, in times of trouble. God, where would we be without you? We, we come to know you as, as the one we build everything on. So, Lord, as we preach your word today, Lord, would you just be here with us? Would you cause us, Lord, to, to be very uh, accepting of the things you're trying to say to us? We need you in all these things. The scripture, Lord, was, was given, Lord, that we might not live in error. So, Lord, just produce with our time today, God, the work that you want to do in us. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in James. I skipped some verses kind of purposely. Oh, I want to show, I want to, I mean, let me do some uh, homework here first, Okay. Get us kind of, we're going to talk about pride <coughs> a little bit today. We have, I think, tried to do a pretty good job of breaking down James. How James is a book that, that he says brother and all the way through it. You see it there in the verse? He says brother. So James is trying to talk to the brothers. James is trying to talk to the Christians about fine-tuning their lives. And what he sees in the church and in the lives of people that he doesn't think the Lord is happy with so he's trying to tune us a little bit he's trying to we talked about that in the very beginning how God has all these things he tunes in nature so there's life on planet earth but then there's things he's trying to tune in us so we there's life in us right in him there's life right that, that everything was created by him for him. That's what we always kind of say. And, and if, we're, if we're allowing God to tune us, we'll have a better life. We'll have more of an abundant life. Uh, so James is trying to do that here. And we've covered a whole bunch of things. We talked about trials. We talked last week about our tongue. We talked about all these different things, you know. And this week we're going to talk about pride a little bit. Now, to set us up for that, there's some other verses I just want you to hear because I think James relates ideas to these verses, okay? So, in these other books, 1 John, it says, We do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world or loves the love of the Father is not in him. I'm having trouble. Trying to get my mouth going here. Sometimes there's a disconnect between my brain and anyhow. So, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. The root of sin is found in those three... I colored them up there, right? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are the root causes. I hate to say that. That seems like a big political term. The root causes for why we get off track, right? Why we... And we, we could talk about the, the two lust ones, but that's really not our topic today. You know, we want things that we don't need that we want things that we shouldn't have we want things that are bad for us right our flesh wants them or our eyes see them and want them so that's those two what we're going to talk today about is pride and how pride messes us up and uh really how we tend to want to elevate ourselves and really diminish or what's the right word others you know, how we're smarter than or better than or better looking than or, or more capable than. 
Or some of us will do this thing where we think we're not as good as others and we, we put ourselves of no value and therefore we don't accomplish much in life because we set real low expectations for ourselves. And God is, uh, James is trying to deal with that and God's trying to fine tune us again on this area called pride, right? So prideful people, hey, pride is the root of sin, right? And God, you know, God measures us will judge us someday on a whole bunch of things nobody can see, but things that are in our heart. You understand that? God has the ability to measure the inside of us, right? Not what we show people, not how we act or pretend to act, or what we value, or, or how we act on Sundays. God is looking at our heart, right? Right? And God's able to see all of those things in our heart. And, and he's just saying these three things are the things that cause our heart to be out of place or, 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 or straying from really life on planet Earth, life in Christ on planet Earth, right? So that's the first verse I want you to see as, as far as homework goes. The second one is, for you see, brethren, the not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. I always like that verse. That'll humble you real quick, right? Doesn't that humble you? God didn't call you because you're smart. God didn't call you because you're strong. God didn't call you because you're rich. God didn't call you because you're famous, right? God called the, the lesser things. I, I, for me, God called a dummy, right? God called a dummy. And... Uh, so he didn't go out there looking for the best of the best. God wasn't looking for the greatest. God was looking for the, the regular folk. God was looking for people like me and you that really, how do I say this? I almost want to cry when I say it. Really, we didn't have a whole bunch else so when we came to God, He could be our all. Does that make sense? God called people that could push a bunch of stuff out of the way so He could be everything to us. And the Lord wants to be your everything. He does, right? Um, so, just these verses are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put the same... The, th the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put the shame the things that are mighty. So it's this idea that do you really want to be somebody? Do you really want to be a big shot? Or you want to be somebody God can use? You want to be somebody God can work through? Somebody, li listen, Jesus made himself of no reputation. He humbled himself, took on the form of man, right, to serve mankind. And he, he, the, that verse goes on to say, even to the point of death, the death of the cross. A shameful, awful death, right? So we see it in our example that Jesus wasn't prideful in any way, right? Jesus was, he, that's our model, we are Christians. We're Christ-like, right? We're not anybody. We're somebody, right? We're somebody for the Lord, right? He begins to be our identity. He begins to be what we're living for, right? Not the things of the world. That Those things are just going to pass away. Those things, psst. I was talking to somebody the other day. My big line is, I turned 60 this year, and man, I can see the end of the rainbow from here. That's what I've been saying. Uh, you know, and I say to somebody yesterday, at 60 years old, you kind of go, you know, I'm not in this for... In my life, Lord, I just... I just want to be what you want me to be. I don't want to leave anything undone. I don't want to be afraid of anything. I don't want to be less than what God wants me to be. I don't want to be more. I, Lord, I just... So, we pick up here in James 2, 
this idea of partiality or, or putting people on a pedestal, right? And then we're going to move into chapter 4 where there's talks about pride and the wars that are within us. So let's read here a little bit. For if there should come into your assembly a man with gold rings or fine apparel, and there should also come a poor man in filthy clothes... And you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say to him, you sit here in a good place and say to the poor man, you sit there or sit here on my footstool. You have, you, have you not shown partiality among yourselves and have become judges with evil thoughts? Now, I will tell you, this is the best church I've ever been in about just everybody loving everybody, right? Do you know there's a county commissioner among us right now? Do you know that? You know what I love about him is he, he's just like us. Loves God like us. He's wonderful like us. Wonderful like us. That, that sounded prideful. You know? We have all kinds of folks among us. We have business owners among us. We have uh, school teachers, man. We got a bunch of school teachers among us. School teachers are awesome. And what I love about our church is we don't elevate. You know, I have a brother-in-law that's a pastor. And uh, they tell him in that church, this is sometimes the attitude of church, churches. They've given him a list of the top ten givers in that church. And they say, hey, your job is to pay attention to those top ten. We don't want you to let the staff deal with all those other people. You pay attention to the top ten. What, if, what about that? I've seen that in different places and different things. Actually, there's been two churches. The, the church that Scott Mendenhall used to serve at, the same thing with that pastor. They were a lot bigger church, and I think they had the top 25. So the pastor would get, at the end of every year, the list of the top 25 givers and say, your job is just to chase these people. What? Can I tell you this just about you? I don't know who gives anything. I don't. That's that's somebody else's job. That's not my job in the body of Christ. I don't care, and and it doesn't matter to me. I I remember a few years ago, we had. Uh, I don't want to say this in a disrespectful way. We had the a town drunk sitting by probably the lady that owns as much land in Champaign County as anybody in Champaign County, and they would sit together in church and talk. And I thought that is so awesome, man. That there's no, right? So I just want to say to you, this is about church. This verse is about church and of how we treat each other in church and how if you're smelly, we don't talk to you. <laughs> right? Uh, I, I, can I say this? I, there's a man in my house and uh, he's, I, how do you, He's nothing special. Let me put it that way. He's kind of a big guy, kind of a bump on the log kind of guy. He don't get excited about nothing. He, he moves kind of slow. He, uh, yesterday, i just tell you about the value in people. Yesterday. And you know, you can look at him and say, I don't know if I see anything in him at all. Yeah. Sometimes you go, hello? Are you even in there? Are you there? Are you? He'll get in my truck and he'll sleep all the way to the place we're going to work. You know what I mean? You try to talk to him. I, I've had, had tried to have a big conversation with him and realized, oh, he's asleep. I've been talking this whole time. He's been sleeping. Anyhow, said all that. Ye yesterday we tore down a shed. Somebody in our church needed a shed tore down and, and they're older and couldn't do it. And, and we were more than happy to go do this for him. And, and the men in my house loved destroying stuff. So it was awesome. And uh, we, we start tearing this shed down, and we realize there's an animal under this shed. And uh, at one point, as I started to pick up a bottom board, a possum stuck his nose out. I don't know about you. You know, a squirrel's one thing. A groundhog's another thing. You know what I mean? A raccoon is another thing. 
But a possum, they don't get rabies. I don't care. So I start to pick this board up and this possum sticks his nose out and I'm like, ah! I scream like a girl, man. I just jump back. And I'm kind of pretty much like, the homeowners are on the porch. People related to us are on the porch and they're, they're, they're laughing. But I'm, 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 I'm hating to say, listen, we tore this shed down, but I'm out of here. I mean, and all the other guys kind of stepped back too. There wasn't, but this guy that I told you that, he says, where's that thing at? He steps up. He, he reaches down here without even thinking. He reaches out. He picks that board up, that possum right there. He takes his foot and tries to put it on that possum to catch it. I'm like, what are you doing? Let that possum run into the woods. So he's dancing around. He's got more energy than I ever saw him ever have. He's more excited than I've ever seen him before. I mean, it's a crazy. He's trying under this board. He's trying to catch this possum. Why are you trying to catch a possum? And eventually he gets out. He's got his feet up against it and trying to trap it against this board and trying to get to it. And eventually it slips out and runs in the woods. And I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I don't want to take that home. And I said, buddy, you just came alive. He said, I used to raise raccoons and possums. I went, are you serious? He said, yeah, that's kind of my passion. Because they'll look at you. I didn't know you had one. I don't know. But you know who it is. You know exactly what I'm talking about. In any event... I step back and I say, you know, there's days that guy don't add a whole lot to what we're doing. He's playing possum. He's playing. <laughs> some days he's kind of out of it. Sometimes he's just, you know, some days it's like, well, you should have left him home, you know. Or I thought about just getting out of the truck real quietly and just leaving him asleep in the back seat. Anyhow. Yesterday he came alive, man, and I don't know. He's in the possum business, I guess. I, I don't know, but he was all alive, all excited. He wasn't scared. And we were able to finish that job that I was kind of like saying, hey, I'm chicken. We were able to finish that job because that guy, and I just want you to know, in every group of people, in, in church, there's a person for everything. There's a person for gifts and ability for everything. You might look at somebody and say, I don't, Lord, I don't get it. That guy or that gal, I, I don't know. But I'm telling you, there's something God put in them that causes them to come alive. And I was very thankful that this man was with us yesterday. He was the hero of the day. They, uh, they brought him out drinks. They brought him out cold drinks. They gave us warm drinks and brought him out cold drinks. <laughs> Understanding the value of people. God has had to teach me that in my life because there's things I like to do and I like people who like to do the things I like to do, right? Um, and sometimes we don't value... other gifts in the body. But everybody to God is valuable. Does that make sense? Everybody to God is valuable. They've always been. They always will be. And the idea here that, that because some are wealthy or some are fancy or some are good looking or some are this or some are that, that makes them, hey, somebody you ought to favor in the body isn't at it at all. Isn't it at all. I have somebody talking back here. What are we doing here? Have you not shown partiality among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? So God's coming at us here about, hey, not seeing the value. Pride actually says, hey, I'm better than that. 
Pride actually says I'm of more value than that. Pride actually lifts me up and diminishes others, right? And the scriptures say, no, that ought not be so, especially in a church situation. Everybody's valuable in the body of Christ, right? I, I, I say this all the time. I pastor a church in the body of Christ, right? It's kind of a calling that God gave me. I didn't go looking for it. Trust me, I'd have been perfectly happy. I think I've said this to you before. I like to work with my hands. I, I, I would have been, a, I, I'm a great deacon. I'd be a great deacon in a church. And I did that for a while in the church. And God, for some reason, called me to something else. But I want to tell everybody in this place, I'm no more important in the body of Christ than you are in the body of Christ. You've got to learn the value of who you are in the body of Christ. I just went to on a Peru trip where I was the, I, I really I had so much leg trouble, I couldn't do really any much work at all. And everybody else was working and I was, I think I told you they were carrying these 100 pound bags of sand and I was just telling them where to put them so I could build me a little throne to sit on, right? Hey, could you put that bag right here so I can get my arm rest? You know what I mean? They were carrying these bags, of, and I just felt awful because I, I want to be part of the whole, I want to be involved, I want to do, I want to, you know what I mean? I, and I just felt so worthless. But everybody has value in the body of Christ. You just got to find your place. In the, my big challenge to the, the 25 or so people that were in Peru with me was, hey, you all were part of a team here. You all felt a role. You all felt important. You all had something in some kind of great way. Now go home and find that at home. Go home and find your place in the body of Christ. Go home and, and be what you're supposed to be in the body of Christ. It, it's the thing that will make you come alive. You were created by God for God. Does that make sense? So to do the things God called you to do is where life is. And the understanding of that whole thing is that everybody is important in the body of Christ. Right? There's, I thought about playing something for you. If you get a chance, uh, really, it's an audio thing that I, there's something called Five Things I Know About People. And a guy named uh, Maxwell. What's his first name? John Maxwell. It's the funniest, most hilarious thing you've ever, you've ever heard in your life. But if you can learn five things about people, it'll change your life about how you view people. Five things. He, he tells some stories. I wanted to play it, but it just, he tells like five, ten minute stories and it just gets kind of long in a church setting. But it's this idea that there's value in people. And even when you can't see it or don't understand it, you know, Vicky back there is valuable. Vicky, raise your hand back there, Vicky. Right there, Vicky. Glad Vicky's with us today. She's a manager at Speedway. Right? Manager Speedway right there. Be nice at Speedway. We have a, my spies at Speedway, you know, be, be kind to the tellers, the clerks at Speedway. Everybody's important. Carol. Carol's important. She goes to another church part time. But other than that, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Carol's important in the body of Christ. Phil, you know Phil right there? Phil, raise your hand, Phil. Phil, Phil's trying to be the next bus driver for LifeWise, right? Hey, they are desperate for bus drivers, right? You know? Finding your place in the body of Christ, figuring out, you know, what you're good at, what you're gifted to do, and, and finding a place to serve and be, it's, everybody's important in the body of Christ. You understand that? Um, right now, there are people watching our kids. Whew. Thank God for people watching our kids. Right? 
we have had times in our church where we did have people watching our kids. And you know, if all of our kids are in here right now, this place is a zoo, right? I'm just telling you, this place is a zoo. You can't. You have one baby talking. And every mom in here is paying attention to that. You know what I mean? I'm just saying. I can't compete with a baby, right? Thank God them brats are out of here. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. Because you can't compete with that. You know what I mean? So how would we ever get things done? You know how valuable a person watching kids is? In terms of, hey, God being able to pour something into your ear without being distracted? Super important. Super important. So here's those thoughts. Let's read a little bit more here. We're getting into this whole pride thing as we go along. Um, Listen, my beloved brother, has God not chosen the poor of this world? Remember, that's the reference to those other verses we saw. The poor of this world to be rich in faith. It's kind of what I said to you. God will pick us because we don't have anything that competes against him. Right? We don't have, I don't have anything of, of great value that's so great in value that I would hold it in something that's equal to God. In fact, I have nothing so God can be the greatest in my life, right? That's why God picked you, because you're the type of people that are able to lay things aside to make Him number one. People struggle when they have other gods. People struggle when they have things that are so important, you know, that they, it's more important than God. But that's why God chose many of us, because we're able, hey, to be in a position where we don't have anything that can compete with Him, and we can just purely give ourselves fully to Him. Right? So, God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs to the kingdom. Now that's a, yeah! I'm, we're poor here, but we won't be poor there. Right? Which He promised to those who love Him. Which God promised to people like us who love Him. Heirs to the kingdom. I, I, for the life of me, I don't understand why anybody wouldn't be serving God with their life. I can't understand why anybody would put God as second place in their life. You know, we, you, they, you weren't called to that. You weren't called, none of you were called to have God second in your life. God's supposed to be everything there is because He called you so, so you could put Him on the throne of your life. Right? And because you do, he, you're heirs to the kingdom. The retirement plan for Christians is good. It's amazing. I used to draw a lot of house plans for people. I, growing up, I learned how to draw. I went to college to draw as a mechanical engineer. Drew on a drawing board for like 11 years. Loved drawing. Love have a little bit of artsiness in me and. And uh, men would, rich men that worked, I worked for, would want to build these big beach houses on them. So I got a chance often to draw these big fancy houses for people. I've drawn mansions for people. And uh, in all of that, the Lord's spoken to me about, this is what these people get, right? They're going to get a mansion on earth for a short period of time on a beach or on a, you know what I mean? And when I read verses like this, I don't know, I can just relate to a lot of these. But you're going to be an heir to the kingdom. So, can't wait. Right? Move along here. Now we're in James 4. We're talking about pride. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Now what are we talking about? We're talking about the fights that are happening not with me and you, but sometimes the fights that happen between me and you happen because there's an issue with me or there's an issue with you. That makes sense? So, as Christians, what happens is we war often within ourselves about who we're now supposed to be. We have this old flesh and we have this new creation God's trying to fashion us into. I don't know about you, but I had a bunch of old clothes and now God wants me to wear a whole bunch of new clothes, right? And 
I kind of like my old clothes. So because of that thought, there's this idea of that war that happens within us. You know, what can our eyes see? What can our desires be? What is good for us? What's bad for us? What pleases God? You know, I can't be everything or do everything, but I do want to do the things that God wants me to do. So I wrestle within me to try to fine-tune me into what God wants me to be, right? And if I can get that tuning, I put my hand out here because I'm thinking about a dial. If God can get me tuned into what I'm supposed to be, and I can stop fighting within me about all these things I want to be, then I can simply focus on what God called me to do in this limited time I have on planet Earth. That makes sense? For some people, it's easy. Jenny could sit at that piano and you just go, Oh my gosh. Man, that's what she's supposed to be doing. That is, that's like love language to God, man. I mean, you know, she plays and you just go, oh, you know, like the angels have come down, you know. But for many of us, there's this wrestling that, that we want to do this or we want to be this or we want to go after that. And the Lord's saying, no, I want you. And, and we make these arguments within us saying, well, I can't do that. Or I can't afford to do that, or I can't be that, or I'm afraid to be that, or whatever. And there's this struggle to go, that's what we're talking about here. Um, do, do they not come from the desire for pleasure that wars in our members? The things we want becoming more powerful than the things we're supposed to be. Everybody get that? The things we want, Tegan... You know, just talk to you, me and you, girl. Just me and you. There's things we want. But there's things we're supposed to be. I want to be a blonde. I'm, kidding, I'm joking. I'm just kidding. She's up there going, why is he picking on me? The things I want versus what I'm supposed to be. And that battle that happens within, the sooner you can surrender and be what God wants you to be, the less struggle you'll have within yourself. Right? Or you can struggle your whole life. But God, hey, God's going to war. God's going to wrestle with you your whole life because he created you to be something for him. You'll never be satisfied doing something for you when you were created to do something for him. That makes sense? I, that, we got this uh, bass and hound. He got the big long ears that dragged the ground and he trains people. He, when people come up, he rolls over on his back and everybody pat, pats his belly. And I'm like, well, he trains you quick. That dog was made with a big old nose. Hey, and he can sniff out. They said, you know, we walk in a room and smell chili. He walks in a room and smells onions, tomatoes, hamburger. You know, he can smell, he has the ability to, you know what I mean? And we want to let him out and bring him in. You know what he wants to do? He wants to smell stuff, right? So he was created to be a smelling dog. He wants to walk around and smell everything, right? And everything. And we're trying to get him just to go out, especially on a cold day or something, just go out. It don't matter if it's raining to him. It don't matter. His, let me do this. We move downstairs. Outside our window is a grill. And the guys will go out there and grill stuff to eat in the evenings on it. And you can just tell. 
man, he smells. And when he goes out, the guys will break off meat and give him. So that's just making him, he'll sit by our door, tail wagging, sniff, sniffing, you know, almost like, let me at him, let me at him, let me at him. You know, he's just all about, because that's what he was created to be, you know. And I, I want him to be, listen, go out, come in, right? He'll go out, do his business, and then want to go the other way. No, 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 trooper, get back here. Trooper, get back here. Even in a dog... There was something put in him that he was supposed to be. Happiest he ever has ever been is when you just... What's funny is he'll see a rabbit or something and he'll take off after a rabbit. That rabbit, it, it's so funny. That rabbit can run... He's the slowest... He thinks he's burning rubber when the, the rabbit... The rabbit is just laughing. The rabbit's going... Shoot, I, at 10% at of my speed, I can outrun this guy, you know what I mean? The cats, there's some cats around. The cats kind of laugh at him. The cats kind of like, oh, oh, here he comes. Whoa, oh, they just stand there. Last second, they just climb under something. He, he dumb enough. Not that word. Uh, he, he's smelly, smelling enough that he doesn't care if they go under a, a something, you know, He'll bust his head chasing that scent. He, he doesn't know that his forehead gets in the way, you know what I mean, of places he cannot go. So is there any wonder, I've made all that point, you were created for something. Is there any wonder why there's a war in you when your flesh wants to be something different? You, you, I, I'm, I told a big bunch of stories there because I was trying to set you up for this idea that you were, there's a war in you because you were made for something. It's already in you. But because of your eyes or your heart or your pride, you want to chase something else. And that creates all kinds of issues within us. And James is trying to identify that. I don't think, listen, I, I don't know that I'm the best preacher that ever preached that verse, but I don't know how you can preach those verses any better than I just did. It's this idea of you were created for something, but there's something about your heart that wants to be something different, and it's always going to be a struggle within. Everybody get that? You get that? You didn't know when I was talking about the dog, I was really... You lust and don't have. You murder and covet and can't obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Look at the next verse here. You ask and you don't receive because you ask amiss. You're asking for the wrong things. I think it's my boy Connor that says, when I, when I get old and get rich, I'm going to get a Lamborghini. I said, Lord, don't ever let him get rich. Right? He don't need no. What happens is, hey, because we get these struggles within us and we're not running, hey, in the things we were created to be, we start asking for things we're not supposed to have. And then we get mad at God because... He didn't give me what I was asking him for. And our faith plummets and says, Oh God, you don't answer my prayers. I know people say to me all the time, God doesn't answer my prayers. Well, right there's the verse that says, This is why you're not receiving that. There's something stirring. It's so important in you that you're asking for the wrong things. That you may spend it on your pleasures. You see that? 
on your want to's. I got real hard again, I'm sorry. And you got real quiet again, I'm sorry. You got real quiet on me. You know those verses that said, hey, you can ask anything in my name and I'll give it to you. Why would he do that? Because it's in line with the things we were created to do and be. This sounds crazy, but as God called me to pastor a church, as I would pray for things for the church, God would give them to me about every time. Because God knew what it was I was supposed to be, even though there was a big war in me that says, I don't want to do that. I'll just tell you right now, I've got used to being on a stage, but I... I thank God for the gifts and calling you give me, but I, I don't. I wouldn't be, let me do it this way. I wouldn't be here if God didn't put me here. I wouldn't be running a recovery house right now if God didn't put me there. Why do I want to live with drug addicts? Why do I want to deal with all their problems? Why do I want to deal with all that? Why? I've never had any drug problems ever in my life. But everything I pray about related to a recovery house, what happens? God gives it to me. And the things I used to pray about and didn't ever receive them is because it's what Mark was pursuing. It's what Mark wanted. And we, we lose this understanding that God's able to see the whole thing. He's able to see eternity. He's able to see. God wants your spiritual growth and maturity more than he wants you to have stuff. Anybody? People don't like when I say that. But God wants me to be what I'm supposed to be, to grow up and be what I'm supposed to be more than he wants me to have stuff. Right? <laughs> I like that. We're swinging. We're asking God. We're praying. But we're missing. Right? You ever see the guy swing like with all his might, like I'm swinging for a big home run and miss that ball and just look so foolish? You know? All he's got. Woo! All he's got just to move some air. What come from it? What happened? The enemy actually uses that in your life. Hey, to, see, to say, see, God doesn't care about you. God's not trying to answer your prayer. I mean, it happens to people all the time. The enemy says, see, you're praying for stuff. God's not doing that. But I, I want to tell you, if you back up and try to see a bigger spiritual picture and pray in that bigger spiritual picture, God will give you stuff. The Bible says it all the way through. You hear me? You all hear me? Do you believe the word of God? Yeah. God, God loves his kids. My wife says I'm a softie. My kids will say, Dad, can I have that? What's the answer? You can have that. My grandkids, I'm even worse. We get in a the store, they're like, can I have that? Of course you can. Can I have this candy? We got to eat it all for mom shows up. Do I got to drink the small one? Can I have the large one? <laughs> my answer is always my answer has always been, I don't care. I'm not a mom. I'm a grandpa. I, I can afford 69 more cents for you to have the large. 
go ahead and get the super duper large. I don't care. Let's go over here and get one of them big cups and have it like this. We just got to drink it all before mom shows up. You, you get what I'm saying? I, th I think I'm being silly, but I think I'm getting my point across pretty strong here. James is trying to get us to understand. We get prideful and we want what we want and we chase what we chase. But we can be missing God. You get that? I'm praying for Troy Christian to win a game. He's out. Troy Christian to win a game. How'd you do this week? You got what? Not good? Man, praying for you. That's our football player right there. Love you, man. I know it's a hard season. Do it all for the glory of God. Mm. Time is. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. You know, when the Bible talks about adultery, we we know what that means. That means you committed to one, but you're running with another. When God, in spiritual terms, talks about adultery, it means you've committed yourself to Him. but you're running with another. So this isn't talking about people that are sexually. This is talking about, hey, you committed yourself to God, but yet you're running with another God. You catching that? Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever, therefore, wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Think about that for a second. If you want to run with the world, the word's hard. I mean, when you say an enemy of God, when I want to run with the world, it makes God my enemy? Or uh, not God might enemy, but makes me an enemy to him? Man, James just pours it on here. James just, da. Do you understand? God ain't playing. The God doesn't want you chasing the things of the world or all about the things of the world. God wants you to, and, and what's great about Matthew 6 is if you'll put God first, all these other things will just, be fine. A Christian that really loves God will always have everything they need. God will always care for them. God will always uh, show up. Do you all get that? If you're a lover of God, God will always show up. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us earns, yearns jealously? You, you all get that? Meaning God's spirit is jealous when we put the world ahead of him. Right? But he gives more grace, therefore, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud. And gives grace to the humble. So, I, I I like to do stuff with kind of word stories and pictures. You know what I mean? So, pride for people. It's like, listen, God resists. It doesn't. He doesn't love. It's just, hey. Hey, hey, until you get out of yourself. 
Have you ever said to your kids, I, I, you, if, when you have adult kids, you have to say, hey, until you get over yourself, I'm not talking to you. You ever have to do that? Until you get over that attitude. I had a boy this week that was working with me, and he, I, I don't know what his deal was. I really don't know. I don't. I looked right at him and said, listen, if you think I need what you're packing, why don't you just go sit in the truck a while? I don't. I'm here to work together. I'm here to do something together. I'm here for, uh, for something really good to happen. But you, you've got... So God resists the proud. God, hey, not really listening right now because you, you've elevated yourself up where you think but gives grace to the humble. I just love, I love when the Bible says, you know, that God gives anything because anything God gives is just this amazing thought that God, I don't deserve it, but God gives it, right? And if I just have a right spirit about me, if I just am what I'm supposed to be, God gives me more grace. And you can ask my wife, I need it. In fact, I made that's a new way for me to kind of argue with her. Right? I, I don't know what your problem is. God gives me more, God gives me grace. God gives me more grace. Jamie. Therefore, submit to God and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you don't think that's a major verse, you're crazy. That is, a, anybody struggling with a spiritual warfare in any kind of way, what do you do? You just say, nope, devil, I ain't believing that lie. Nope, 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 I ain't doing that thing. Nope, I'm not thinking about that. Nope. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you get out of my life. You get out of my head. You get out of my family. You get out of my business. You get out of my stuff, right? Devil, I don't want you. I don't like you. I don't need you. You're not welcome here, right? The devil goes, well, that's not very nice. I'm getting out of here. You don't get that? You talk about a way to, to win. Just resist the devil. What will he do? Submit yourself to God and resist the devil. He'll run away. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands. You sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Oh, did I go two at a time? Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. Trying to think of a way to powerfully teach that thought. If you're willing to lay yourself down, he's willing to lift you up. Getting close to the end. Two verses. Do not speak evil of one another, brethren. He who speaks evil of a brother judges his brother, speaks evil in the law. Uh, of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you are not a doer of the law, but a judge. Real easy. Mind your own business. Stay in your own lane. Right? Get your... We, we had a guy in our house get a piece of wood in his eye. Instead of my wife trying to help him get the wood out of his eye, she went and got the Bible verse. She thought it was so funny. You that worry, you know, about a speck in your brother's eye ought to get the log out of your own eye. <laughs> He's like, I'll ask somebody else for help. <laughs> We're not the judge. Okay, let me say this. I am not your judge.
I'm not here to judge. My whole job is to encourage you. My whole job is... There's one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? So, in terms of pride, in terms of this whole thing, my job, Connie, my job not. My job just to encourage you, just love the Lord, girl. Hey, all the struggles we have, Lord will help us. He'll help us, right? Don't worry. Don't fear. Hey, God's our friend. He's our helper, right? Not, well, you did this wrong, or you did that wrong, or what do you think you're doing, or how, why'd you say that, or you drive that car? Ken, Lord's proud of you. Lord's proud of you. He's watched you. He's watched you change. You're no longer the man you used to be. The Lord says he's proud of you. Our job isn't to judge, elevate ourselves, put down others. If we want to live life on planet Earth, we got to get it right. Thank you all for being valuable. Go out there. And let God use you. Go out there and be amazing. He created you, baby. He picked you. Because you would give yourself to Him. Now let Him use you. Lord, we give you thanks today for praise. You're the God of all. Just thinking about folks today, Lord, just thinking about their struggles thinking about God how sometimes the war's within us and how God it it ought not be we we should surrender Lord to the world and the love of the world and the things of the world and just try our best to seek you find you know you love you devil will come but Lord if we'll resist him he'll flee God, if we ask right things, you give us right things. We ask wrong things, Lord. You don't operate in the wrong. Help us, Lord, to discern those things. Lord, be with our church. Bless our church. God, we've been preaching these hard things about, uh, about how we get it right. I pray, God, we take these things to heart. It helps us, Lord, to have life abundantly on planet Earth. And we'll give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming. We love you. Come back now, would you? Tegan, picking on you. <laughs>